Okay, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Jean Bliss. How are you doing, Jean? Hey, I'm good. Nice <laughs> to see you. And Jean is the founder and president of Customer Bliss and the co-founder of the Customer Experience Professionals Association. And she is really the one who, you know, really came up with the idea of the, you know, the customer the customer officer, the chief customer officer, and has worked um, in companies like Land's End, Microsoft, Cowell Bank, or All State Corporation. And really, I mean, your career has really been all about the customer and the customer experience, right? It, it has for 35 years. This is all I focused on. Excellent. And, and you have uh, your recent book that came out, Would You Do That to Your Mother?, Yes. And and um, so tell me a little bit about uh, about the genesis of the book and where the idea came from. Sure. You know, we need a beacon about how to behave in business. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is 32 case studies that define our lives as people and humans as we go through the world. You know, what binds us is how we're treated and how we're honored. And so it's really uh, the whole book is think about it as an audit or a test of are you doing these 32 things to customers who grow your business, and would you do these things to your mother? So <laughs> it's uh, it, it gets pretty pretty simple to the heart of the matter of why we're in business because we've overcomplicated everything. Yeah, I, I mean, I love I love the the premise of the book. I hear chapter one. How would your mother? How would your company act if every customer was your mother? And it's just interesting because just before we came on, I was having a a back and forth with a a luxury car company whose name shall uh, remain anonymous right now. And as I was a think, customer, as, as a, a customer, customer yes, yeah. me. And I was thinking because I was preparing for the interview, and I was just thinking, oh my goodness, like you know, if I was their mother, I'd be coming around to slap them across slap. the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's just there's things that and again, you know, we have to give moms benefit of the doubt. We don't we don't do these things on purpose, but mm -hmm. all of the silos in our quarterly, it all seeps in and it makes us act differently at work than we would ever act at home or with our family. Yeah. Well, why, why is it, though, the thing that always fascinates me, I mean, you know, and we've all been guilty of it, right, is that, as I said, I mean, I'm just having a an experience from the customer point of view, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we and all of us have have a thousand of those thousands of those like every yep. year or whatever. But yet we go into work and we forget we're customers. And then we start treating our customers differently than we would like to be treated ourselves. Well, over the how have you? Why does that happen? I mean, <laughs> well, I there's a couple of things. First of all, we're, we're because of the way that the organization is organized, we're we're forced to think in a little box around our silo and our individual KPIs because those individual KPIs are what we're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, um, paid on or motivated on and we, we we get these blinders and we inadvertently for example hire good people but then lock them into policies that don't let them act the right way or we don't trust them with customer lifetime value that let them you know do what I call blending golden rule and doing the right thing you know right. policy and the golden rule and again I think that for me, this gets down to what I call leadership bravery and deliberateness. You have to think ahead of this stuff happen happening to say, here's what we will do and here's what we won't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and what, I, what I like about that is, I mean, I, I do think it, it comes from leadership because it is amazing how um, how companies kind of, they, they go through processes of setting themselves up to make sure that they push customers through a particular experience that suits the company more than the customer, right? That's right. And, and, and you know, that happens all the time. And yet, um, I'm pretty sure if we could pull up uh, 100 random companies here, we'd find customer-centric somewhere in their mission, vision statement, right? Right. This isn't about the human beings in the company. Mm. This is what happens to us as human beings when we're put into the sausage maker of business. Mm -hmm. And to prevent that from happening takes a set of really deliberate things. It takes being really clear on how you will hire people and then what you're going to do to not make them fall into the trap of policy cops. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen automatically. It takes 
trusting the front line to make a call instead of coming up with rules that make sense for one set of things, but don't fly with your best customers or in scenarios where, you know, you know, one of the questions I asked is, would you turn down your mom's warranty claim three days out of warranty? Well, certainly when we wrote those warranty rules, they probably weren't for somebody three days out of warranty. You know, I mean, you, you think about all the translations of all of the rules that exist in our life, all the way back to even the constitution. When you start taking things out of context and looking at them only at face value, I think that's when we walk away from our values. We, right. we inadvertently create boxes and rules around things that, that we don't think we would normally do. Yeah, I think. I mean, part of it, I think, is probably that we get so afraid of if we make an exception that it's going to become the rule instead of like saying, well... It is actually an exception. And, you know, how many people, like you said, how many people does something happen to a day after the warranty expires? Well, it seems to happen a lot. But, well, but, <laughs> but, but, but on the other hand, listen, hmm. let's talk about the fact that your your organic customer growth is overwhelmingly what's going to drive your, right. you know, your, your business growth. And if you trust, if you hire people for the right reason, which mm -hmm. is their intellect, their light behind the eyes, their ability to empathize and be good humans, and then you give them things that show them you trust them, like customer lifetime value. You've been proactive in understanding where are those exception points. And then you say, look, we hold the, we hold you with the power to lose or keep that customer. Right. Yes, you might make an exception, but you're going to keep a 20-year, X million dollar customer. And isn't that more important than upholding the rule for the sake of the rule? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where living in the gray is very difficult and very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I would agree because people obviously it, – it's funny. I, I find this fascinating about work. I've always found it fascinating is like, you know, our lives, our personal lives, everything is like we have are in constant flux, right? I mean, things happen all the time. I mean, you you're 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 on the road right now. You could your flight could get cancelled tonight, right? And you'd have to make adjustments. Yes, it could. Yeah, you yeah. never know. You yeah. just live with and the I hope, And I hope to goodness I haven't jinxed you. But um <laughs> But when it comes to work, then everybody wants everything to be neatly demarked and packaged and rules and no gray areas. It's like we it's like we completely forget that the life's not like that. Well, and, and that's part of what we're trying to teach. And, you know, this whole thing about customer experience is a little bit challenging because mm -hmm. we're turning it into a different set of rules. And customer experience is really isn't supposed to be accounting rules but yet right. there's a there's a tendency and a risk that it becomes just another set of rules when in fact at the end of the day it's leadership it's choosing how you will grow but more importantly it's choosing what you won't do to grow and right. people don't do the hard work to say we will never real make our people do this mm -hmm. we will never force our customers into this it's not worth it to us to get money this way. And that's work. That's a deliberate workout and challenge and framing what you'll do and knowing the stages or the missions from the customer standpoint and then turning it into operations and then saying, okay, if this is who we're going to be, this is how we hire people. Right. This is how we onboard them. This is what we're going to provide for them. And this is how we're going to celebrate them. I mean, it's a whole DNA that has to click into place. And we click a couple pieces into place, but we don't click the rest of it into place. Because yeah. let's face it, I mean, the tough thing about customer experience is that when a lot, you know, some people look at customer experience and they think um, customer experience is like maybe the buying process or when or you surveys. first or yeah. survey or whatever. But really, I mean, as you as you have pioneered, I mean, customer experience end to end, it's from the moment you interact with the brand all the way through you know whatever right. interactions you have thereafter and they have to have some level of consistency otherwise it all falls down right well yeah it's leadership it's mm -hmm. really leadership i i call it leadership bravery you know when you think about our lives besides our faith and the people we hold dear and our values what binds us in the world is how we're treated mm -hmm. by the companies and the people with whom 
to whom we give our hard earned resources. Mm. And, it, you know, what we're focusing on is the mechanics instead of what matters. Right. And, 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 and again, I think that's where the work is. That's where I'm choosing to actually focus my work for the rest of my life is around less about the mechanics and more about around the leadership bravery and the deliberateness around choosing who you are going to be and who you won't be. Mm. And I love that you have a chapter here called Don't Make Me Feed You Soap, right? Make it <laughs> make it easy to do business with you. <laughs> do you and like I, that title? I love that title. And I had and I had a I had a really strange experience um some years back when I, I took over um I took over CEO of a company and one of the first things I did is I went and visited a bunch of our top customers as you do yeah. right and just to have a just to introduce myself have a conversation and the message I got back from them was amazing they said love your product um, love your service love what you do it's fantastic but boy you are hard to do business with and I thought, soapy 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 I know and I couldn't <laughs> yeah. get my head around that immediately <laughs> to think wow if they love what our product love what we do what are we doing here and it was to your point is everything was internally focused and we yeah. actually made it hard to do business so why well, how does that happen in an organization because that completely shocked me at the beginning to be honest it's it's again so here's the thing yeah. and and I worked really hard in this book to say look I'm not pointing my finger at sure. you it, it, we are giving you mom's benefit of the doubt all the way throughout this book is that these things seep in. It's it's the mobile experience being built differently than the store experience. Right. It's this merchant building differently than that merchant. It's one part of the onboarding process being built separately from another part of the onboarding process. It's five different call center lines, each asking you the same thing and not connecting the information. Right. It It is the um, organizational divide that creates the Bermuda Triangle moments that make you as a customer do a number of things. Uh, and it's in the soap moments chapter. Mm -hmm. It puts the monkey on your back. Everything we call in or ask for is we're given homework in return. Right. You have to be the only one that knits the information together. Here's what I bought last. Here's how valuable I am to you. Here's how many people I talk to. Mm -hmm. um, we have to find the communication because we fall into the black hole of communication. You know, the one story I tell in there, which is just classic for all of us. Well, two things. One, the refrigerator repairman or the cable guy never not telling you how far they are away from you mm -hmm. or power company the power goes out and we're doing we're doing a full body slam do we move out to a hotel do we stay home do we call do we not call you know the best ones it's it's communication and mm -hmm. it's actually fearless sharing sometimes just saying hey we don't know the answer but we'll keep you posted now there's a human being who's mm -hmm. willing to put their you know what on the line and say okay we just rolled five trucks. Here's what we're seeing, and we're going to keep you posted. Yeah, and 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 I and I've always thought that that is absolutely what you're saying. And if you put yourself on the customer side, you're we're always okay when somebody tells us they either don't know or listen. I'm going to have to find that out and come back to you, and then they do come back to you, obviously. Right. And as opposed, there's to, that halo effect yeah. of even the I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And. You know, and and then and then it, it multiplies because we don't tell our front line what they need to know. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got, you know, dancing people mm -hmm. who are doing a juggle or dancing or coming up with some bloody blah, -blah <laughs> company mm -hmm. line that may and, and here's where the erosion happens. Now you've got employees having to say stuff they don't believe in and right. doesn't make them feel good either. And so yeah. Boom, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Now you've got erosion in a lot of different ways happening. Yeah, I mean, it, it, sound effects. it is. Yeah, it, it's, it, I love it. It's it's that vicious circle. Actually, we had another experience the other day where something was supposed to get delivered and they actually just, you know, called us up and said, I'm sorry, we sent it to the wrong place. Oh. But we'll get it to you as fast as we can. And, you know, OK, I'm good yeah. with that. I'm good with that. At least you told me instead of just, you know, trying to cover it up. Um, right. And then you have you have things like uh, you know um, taking the high road. So what's yes. take, a balanced relationship with customers? What's a, what's a balanced relationship? Well, this is all the stuff, and again, most of this happens because we're in the middle of the organization trying to create boundaries and protect our company or our revenue. Um, this is a coupon that's worth 
that you can redeem, but there's so much fine print on how much you can right. redeem it that you can never really re redeem it. Or you buy an airline ticket for what looks like a great price, but by the time you buy the pillow and the meal and the <laughs> seat that's not next to the bathroom and all right. of the other stuff, you know, you've added. I, I actually did that the other day. Yeah. I bought my husband a ticket using miles. It was like only 12,500 miles. I'm like, man, is this a good deal? But by the time I got him a better seat and this, it was like, like an a hundred dollars plus 12,000 miles. I'm like, well, what, if, what? And you, you spend that money before you realize I'm like, what? I just got whiplashed. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, and it's, it's things like being truthful and, you know, trusting customers. I, any, I encourage people in the book to do something called, I call a trust audit. So along every piece of communication curriculum, see if there's anything that says to your customer and how you talk and what you say and what you ask them to do, we don't trust you or mm. we are protecting ourselves. And again, this isn't because these are bad people. Right, right. This is just somebody doing a spreadsheet saying, look, for every uncashed check, we should charge people not $5, but $25. <laughs> right? And look at this spreadsheet. Yeah. And, you know, wow, cha-ching, we get kind of – cuckoo over the potential dollars and <laughs> we we lose the forest for the trees because yes yes you may increase you know that top line revenue but you're gonna i've left companies for that kind of shenanigans and that's why yeah. i call the audit last book the end of the book called stop the shenanigans not, yeah i know i noticed it here I, I, I love that as well and it's funny because you what you say that is that the you do get people who get into this idea as well yes you know there's the spreadsheets but also there's the let's We'll design a process and then we'll teach the customers to follow it, right? right. You know, we'll force them into this and then they'll learn how to do it and then they'll be compliant well, thereafter. Them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that and that just never works because you know we're, as I say, we're, you know we're all different. Um, so what have you seen? Where where have you seen this really kind of completely change an organization when they get these things right i mean have, i mean you've obviously been very successful helping organizations so what what could somebody expect if they really put the work into into the customer experience sure well i mean in the book there are 82 companies that mm -hmm. i call eight you know make mom proud companies and and it's about leadership bravery choosing to step in a different direction and you know it, it's it's almost what people might call irrational business behavior. You know, for example, um, a really well-known hotel brand now, Virgin Hotels, started off of Richard Branson and, and Raul Leal. They don't charge um, for Wi-Fi or even delivering your in-room meal. They consider mm -hmm. Wi-Fi a, a right. right, not a revenue stream. Right. They created something they call uh, street pricing, which is, you know, your snicker bar, you don't have to trepidatiously open it thinking you're just buying an $18 or an $8 <laughs> snicker, snicker bar. You know, they, they actually send their, their managers out with pads of paper to say, okay, it costs $6 or $3 or $1.50 at the local 7-Eleven, then we're going to, you know, we're only going to charge you that. It's, it's, it, you know, Southwest Airlines forever has practiced what they call transparency, mm -hmm. where, you know, they don't charge for change fees or whatever. Um, other, other great companies are in the book, you know, this whole wonderful thing around REI where they choose to close on black Friday because they're so clear about their purpose in lives, which is to get people outside and with families is that right. black Friday, black Friday is a family day, not a commerce day. Well, paradoxically, when you practice irrational business behavior, if you're if you're dinging the heartstrings of your customers, guess what happens? Yeah, yep. you grow, baby, grow, and <laughs> you know they're growing as a result of it. Um, another great company is um, uh, there's another company in the book. It's not REI. They do what they call a worn. Um, is it Cabela's? I think it might be Cabela's. They go, they go around and help college students repair their clothes oh. uh, so they can keep wearing them. And they call it a worn college tour, whether it's a, whether it's their clothes or not, guess what? Here's a halo effect. What are they doing? They're, they're embedding in your heart, a brand that you probably will buy when you have money in your pocket. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a great, healthcare organization in there that they built something called the fruits and vegetables prescription program because they recognize that people in lower income bracket brackets guess what they're eating fast food sure. processed mm -hmm. food and so they've 
they've partnered with all of these wonderful um, co-ops and with doctors where the doctors are writing prescriptions for tomatoes and vegetables and cucumbers and you can go redeem it. I mean, I had the most fun finding um, these examples of people acting with congruence of heart and habit and growing as a result, you know, I mean, and there's big and there's small and there's, yeah. yes, there's also, you know, disruptors, lemonade insurance is a, is a new all mobile based um, insurance personal lines company that mm -hmm. germinated out of the East coast. And when you file your claim, most of which they file in 10 minutes, you have to do a video in front in on your computer, on your mobile app, to their AI bot gym, a very mom like thing, which is a loyalty pledge. You have to mm. video a pledge that you're telling the truth, right? <laughs> so, so help me, mom. Right? I, you know, I mean, mm. gosh, it's just we. You know, it doesn't really matter who we are. We we all were raised with a set of things, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's about letting us all bring the best version of ourselves to work. And it sounds. Again, way too simple, but it's how do you turn that in your operating model? That's what this book is dedicated to. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a, a fantastic place to, to, to end this interview. And I love that idea. And I just think you're correct. I just think if we just remember the things, even, you know, even if we just remember the things that really irritate us about our own customer experiences, I think we do, right. a, lot, we do a lot better right. in how we how we treat other people. Well, listen, Jean, this has been fantastic. Um, you know, the book is, um, where's it going? Why, why would you would do you that? Would you do that? We have to get you a copy. Um, I, I would love a copy. Thank you. Okay. Um, yep. The make, yeah. the make mom proud standard on how to treat your customers. So great takeaway from today, everybody. Next customer call you're on. Next person who calls in. Next thing you send out. Imagine it's your mom. Hopefully, you, <laughs> just hopefully you have a good relationship with your mom. But <laughs> just imagine it's well, your mom. Well, if it's not your mom, it's somebody you love <laughs> Some, like your mom. Exactly. Right? There you go. So, Jean, um, thank you very much. Um, your website is uh, customer customerbliss.com. Yeah. yeah. Super so, easy. So if you want to find out more about Jean, um, I'm sure you're you're uh, um, regularly speaking. I'm sure you're completely busy these days. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. I've been I've been given a lot of love, so I'm grateful for all of that. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Jean. It's a pleasure you're talking welcome. with you today. <laughs>